either we are there or not, ITSB Magazine still gets the best stories. There are plenty of conferences and all sorts of events that spark our curiosity and allow us to start conversations with some of the world's brightest minds. In person or virtually, we sit down with them at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Together, we discover what the synergy of these three elements means for the future of humanity. Knowledge is power, now more than ever. Marco. Sean, where are you? I am on the road. And where? Exactly. Heading to a ton of neon and jingling coins. Neon and, lights? And, and some hacking. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm starting. I'm starting. Are you going through a desert? I am going through a desert. Okay. And, I think uh, I get the feeling. I think that I, I, think I, feel I, the, I feel the top is down. It's pretty warm out. It's nice and dry. And uh, every now and then a dust storm comes and destroys the windshield. So you can't see very clearly, but uh, you, you still make it. I've had that experience, by the way. <laughs> you had it? <laughs> I was just like, okay, I don't, I'm knocking on wood. Storm. I'm never going to have that. But yeah. I think, yeah, I think we can give up. Part, but... I think we can. But once you arrive, that, Marco. You're going to see that big sign, right? The, you see the welcome to the fabulous to Las Vegas. Vegas. Exactly. And that's where we're yeah. going. Shots that's where we're road. headed. Exactly. We're chats on the road to Black Hat. And uh, of course, once we're there in Vegas, there, there's a lot going on, including DEF CON, which we're covering as well. And, and who knows what else. But um, today is all about Black Hat and the briefings and the trainings and the keynotes and the sessions, and the arsenals and the everything under the sun uh, that brings the biggest hacker community together to help solve the world's technical problems, which ultimately hopefully help some, solve some of the societal ones as well. Um, you got to start somewhere. So we'll start with the tech. Uh, there is a social engineering uh, thing going on yeah. there too. But uh, Where is that? anyway, Marco, this, this is a tradition. And it is a those... tradition. And uh, let me say that for the people watching the video, because this time we're actually going to do the video as well, they already see that there is Steve Wiley on Black Hat. Of course, Steve is sitting there going, what the, these guys are <laughs> Are they going to announce me or not? But for those that are listening, the podcast is the usual rumbling that Sean and I do every time before we start getting into the conversation. But I think, Sean, it's time to welcome Steve. Good to see you again. It's always a birthday when we see you for ITSB Magazine. That's right. Seven years, I believe. Is that right? Yes, we were, we were born in the desert. Who's Vegas. counting anyway? At, at Black Hat. <laughs> yes. Well, happy happy seventh birthday to you guys. Good to Absolutely. be back with you. Yeah, it's all, it always a joy. Always a joy. And uh, yeah, every, every year is different. Uh, a lot the same, but a lot changes. Um, certainly the last couple of years have, have uh, put a put a light on things in a different way and helped us appreciate things differently and, and look at things differently. And I suspect a, a lot of how the last year or two have, have come together have helped shape what this year's Black Hat's going to look like. And um, for those who haven't heard our conversations uh, in the past years, Steve, maybe just a quick word from you. Uh, so folks know who you are. I know you as the GM of Black Hat, but I think there, there's been some shifts in in, uh, in in title and things like that as well. So what, what's going on with with Steve? Yeah, so so general manager of Black Hat, but I've also got a broader role within Informa Tech, so looking after the cybersecurity portfolio. So that includes all of our cybersecurity related businesses. But for purposes of today, GM of, of Black Hat. Uh, I've been with Black Hat for, I guess, I'm probably about the same age as you guys, about seven years now, so we can share a birthday together. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, it, you know, we're kind of coming out of hopefully what has been a weird couple of years, uh, and it's been good. I've been able to connect with you guys even even through that. You know, last year we held the event in uh, in Vegas in the desert, and it was just so great to be back, right, in some, in some form, any form. Uh, but it was a much it was a much smaller event than than the normal black hat. Just given the situation, we were just happy to be black to be back in in, in Vegas. Um, you know, this year 
it, things are feeling, um, you know, like they're getting back to where we were, which is just a really good, um, a good sign. And I'm getting that sentiment from people that they're just glad to be seeing people, glad to be connecting in person again. And while we're not out of the woods, we've made a long, a, a lot of progress towards that. Yeah, and, and we have always been connecting no matter what. And the big question I remember you know, two years ago was like, what, what's going to happen now? Like, oh, we have to go hybrid and then, I mean, we have to go virtual and then it's going to be hybrid. And many times we, we touched on about the fact that are we ever going to go back to just in person, which is wonderful, of course, everybody's excited, but, you know, it also open other opportunities to to create an event that is maybe even has a wider reach than than the local event. So tell me a little bit about what what can we expect on that side this year? Yeah, no, I think it's a really good point, Marco. Like you know, during this, we've been sort of managing through it, uh, and I think we talked about in previous uh, calls, like early on in the pandemic when everything is switched to virtual. It was a new playbook, entirely new playbook, and we had to really sort of engineer that from the from the ground up. And we made the decision at that point that, um, you know, for Black Hat, what makes sense is to focus on the content. That's what people know us for, right? So we focused on making sure that we had, even in a digital format, the best research. And and it was good. It was it was a good virtual event, and it was a real learning opportunity for us. You know, last year, obviously, it was uh, not quite back to in-person events. So we were we had the event as a, a, a hybrid event. Um, and we were sort of figuring out that, to your point, the virtual component does have some nice um, pros, right? As much as we all love the in-person experience and nothing replaces that in-person experience, there's some benefits you get with virtual. Um, you get to come back and watch all the content, right? Because when you're in a in in the Mandalay Bay, you can only watch one session at a time. Uh, so there's that, right? You get the full, you know, all the recordings from the whole, the whole program, which people seem to really like. And then um, to your other point, it, it does help for people to be able to, to access the event. So we saw from 2019, where we had in our overall registration, we had about 112 company, or sorry, 112 countries represented. For our event last year, it was 140 countries. So that just that's you know one you know metric there that just shows that in terms of accessibility, having the virtual component is is really good. I think especially this year when we're still not out of the pandemic, there's still people that will have you know reservations about being in a large venue in person as they should be. And and uh, for some people, they'll they'll elect they are electing to attend the event virtually. And you know I'm happy we're still you know, able to use those learnings from the last couple of years and help it to shape what is the future of hybrid events look like. I feel like Black Hat's been a real um, sort of writing the blueprint on that for a lot of big events because it was really honestly uncharted territory for most event organizers. We've tried to be on the, you know, on the cutting edge of that in terms of what is it, what should this look like in the future and how do you, how do you manage both of your, your audiences and both in person and, and, uh, and virtual. Yeah, and I, I think there, there's an interesting color associated with uh, this year's event as well. Silver, right? 20, 20, yes. 25th anniversary is another another reason to celebrate. And the reason I bring that up is is just the the, the, the history of, of the conference. And when you have to shift so dramatically, it, it can be difficult to hold on to some of the traditions. And when you when you start to bring things back, refolding them back in. And I know um, I don't want to jump the gun too quickly. I know Chris Krebs is, as a keynote is going to be taking a look at that topic. Maybe we'll get that into a second. But just from a from an overall conference perspective, where where do you see things sitting now compared to 25 years ago? What, what's the growth been like? Um, how have things changed from a conference perspective in the last last quarter century now? Yeah, it's a, it's a big year for us. So yeah, silver silver anniversary, and, and we're excited about that. And uh, I'm happy to say that I, I think there, there's going to be some nice swag in the in the Black Hat retail store that commemorates the 25 years because it is an important milestone. And uh, and yeah, Chris Krabs, our day one keynote speaker, is going to is going to dig into that a little bit as someone who's been around and has had some you know, just various uh, vantage points on our 
our community and on the industry that we're in. And we'll be, you know, sharing his thoughts on that, where we've, where we've come. Um, and, you know, while I've only been around for seven or eight years of, of Black Hat's role here, I mean, it's certainly what I hear a lot from the review board is um, it's pretty crazy how, how this community has grown up in the last 25 years and how a lot of those, those people that were early, involved with some of the earlier cons are, you know, they're now, you know, CISOs and heads of security and, you know, and, and they've started companies, uh, gone the entrepreneurial route. So I think uh, what I hear from them is just the how taken aback they are at, at how far we've come. And we've seen sort of everyone progress along in their careers along the way. And obviously, cybersecurity has only gotten exponentially larger in that 25 years, right? I mean, it's 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 become a mainstream topic now. I mean, I think we're all getting sort of used to, you know, hearing about some of the challenges in cyber. You know, it's, it's, it's now, you know, mainstream news uh, all the time. So that's a that's a big leap from where this community started, you know, in the basements, uh, you know, 25 years back. You know, a quick a quick fun note is that uh, when we were creating the page for the the two event in Las Vegas, we you know I learned from Sean back in the days. You call it like hacker summer camp, and and as he wrote that, I'm like, are you sure that the new generation actually do even know what that is? <laughs> You know, it's kind of right. like it made me think like how much what you just said, how much has changed. And uh, and and you mentioned to be in the mainstream, but I feel like it's also changing the way it is in the mainstream. I'm 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 seeing more and more embracing it as a as a normal thing to talk about and not just ah, oh, there's the breach, ah, oh, there's the, the hackers, the bad the cyber criminal, the bad one, and so forth. So even in the seven years we've been covering this, we've seen this evolution, which it's a positive one, in my opinion. And I can't even think 25 years ago. Um, of course, Sean was probably there. So who knows? How, how has it changed, Sean? <laughs> I, I wasn't there 25 years ago. I don't, I don't have the chops, uh, chops to be there at that point in time. But uh, no, I think you're making an interesting point because um, I, I think it's probably a good time to bring in the other uh, keynote, Kim Zetter, an investigative journalist who does look at these things uh, very seriously and, and very in depth. And, and I'm excited to hear that she has a keynote on day two. And, and uh, I don't know if you can give us a little tease of, of uh, what she might be uh, bringing to the table. Uh, as her yeah. Keynote. So, I, you know, so I'm, I'm also really excited about, about Kim's talk. You know, she's a storyteller, right? And she's she's covered so many of the the big big events uh, over the last you know years, and and uh, I think uh, safe, she's still sort of finalizing her, her her talk, but safe to say she'll be drawing on you know her experience covering you know everything from you know nation state attacks. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm sure there'll be a, a, a quite a, a heavy coverage of Stuxnet, uh, Stuxnet and the role that played for our industry, right? That, that's a a topic she's uh, she wrote a book on, in fact. So um, I think uh, she brings an interesting perspective that not, not many have. You know, that really being sort of in the front seat, you know, vantage point of a lot of this that's played out over the years. And so, can you give us? And I, I don't know. Normally, I have the theme on the tip of my tongue. What, what's this year's theme, and and how does that kind of play through some of the rest of the? stuff because I, I we're we're talking keynotes now which is part of the briefings there's, there's a lot of other stuff which we'll get into but how does yeah. it how does the theme what is it how does it shape the conversations for the briefing specifically for sure so we always you know we don't really kind of prescriptively go in with themes on, on black we like to you know all of our content comes from the community right so we, you know each year we we do the call for papers and we get submissions from researchers around the world and themes sort of bubble up um through that uh, which is I, that's one of my favorite you know parts of this job is working with the review boards and kind of hearing that dialogue that happens as they're vetting the different submissions and what gets through and you know so I, I think um, there's I think one thing that jumped out at me this year was there's quite a few talks that are related to what's happening in Ukraine right now so I think that's going to be really um, interesting uh, there's two or three briefings that are going to touch on that. Um, so it's uh, it's always nice to see when you know the content at Black Hat is 
sort of mirroring what's playing out in the real world around us. And certainly, you know, Kim and, and Chris, our two keynote speakers, were, are right there as well in terms of what's happening in the real world. You know, Chris, uh, you know, coming from his role uh, as director of cybersecurity, right, for the U.S., um, you know, shares that that he had a, a, a unique vantage point in a lot of, uh, uh, of events that have played out over the last few years. So I think... Um, I think that's going to be a, kind of a key theme is where, what we're seeing in, in society. And, and to you know, Marco's point earlier, I, I can't say that we're going to solve any societal problems with Black Eye this year, but, um, but it's nice when the content reflects what's happening in, in the world around us. Yeah, as it should. I mean, you, 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 can't, you can't keep uh, as many still think they can do. You know, technology is separated from humanity and society. It's all feeding on each other and and again because it is part of each other so it's it's great to see the evolution and sean mentioned you know that there is like social engineering which has become more and more of a, a conversation and 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 trainings and the the human side of of people being in the job so including um, disinformation campaigns you know some of the softer side of cybersecurity and how that that's playing out as well yeah, yeah. So, give us uh, some other insight uh, for what people can can expect uh, yeah. this year and there. Yeah. So, I, I always kind of like to pull out a couple of you know briefings that catch my attention um, as uh, as I'm, I'm going through it. So, I'll give you guys some highlights on what I'm some of the sessions that I'm looking to to check out this year. Uh, and again, some of this relates to what's happening in in, in Ukraine. But there's one session. Uh, Glitched on Earth by Humans. So this is a, a look at uh, vulnerability in the SpaceX Starlink sat um, system, uh, which uh, you know knocked out internet, internet access in, in Ukraine and Eastern Europe recently. So we're, again, we're seeing how that's playing out in the real world. Um, I think that'll be a really interesting um, session for parts of the world that are dependent on satellite-based internet. Um, you know, that's, that's very important. Um, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, a talk that Katie Mazuris is doing on, on sort of how the bug bounty program has evolved, right? So she's obviously been very involved with that with her roles at Microsoft and and uh, and with Hack the Pentagon. So she's going to do a talk that really talks about where we've come with bug bounty programs and where we're going. Which I think you know that is so important to our community, right? They, they a lot of them are are involved with bug bounty programs. Um, either hosting them or or uh, applying to them. So I think that'll be a good talk. I think there's uh, I, another one related to to U Ukraine is there's a talk that's covering some of the technical details around um, in destroyer, which is sort of a, a second version of a of a um, of an attack that affected Ukraine's power grid back in 20, 2016. So they're going to sort of do a bit of a reverse engineering of Industrial 2, as they're calling it, compared to the original attack on the Ukraine uh, power grid back in 2016. Um, speaking of disinformation, there's a talk about the growth of election disinformation. Um, this particular talk was looking at the, the Venezuelan election, but you know, obviously there's parallels that can be drawn around the world and how disinformation campaigns are affecting um, the electoral process. Um, there is um, you know, a talk that caught my eye because it, I don't know if you guys remember back in 2021, there was a law passed in China about how researchers needed to disclose vulnerabilities, basically saying that they had to, in parallel with disclosing to the affected vendor, they had to disclose to the Chinese government. Um, so uh, we've got a, a researcher that's going to be doing you know, a talk uh, on that. Uh, called Dragon Tails Measuring Dependence on the International Vulnerability. Sorry, that's the wrong one. It's growth. It's, uh, let me find the right one here. Yeah, Dragon Tails Measuring Dependence on International Vulnerability Research. So um, that'll be interesting looking just at the effects of that 2021 passage of the law uh, and, and kind of what that means for researchers today. Yeah, you had me at Dragon Tails. Yeah, good name. <laughs> There's a talk on, uh, again, kind of relating to, to, to Ukraine. Uh, some researchers from Sentinel-1 are doing a talk on real cyber or espionage, DDoS leaks and wipers uh, in the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, so they're looking back at some of the security operations from starting back at the beginning of 2022 
um, specifically the use of nation state um, wiper malware in, in, uh, in cyber warfare. So really, yeah, again, so just some really kind of compelling, you know, talks. That's just a, a handful of the ones that grabbed my attention. It's a, it's a big program and we've got 90 briefings um, this year. Most of them are happening in person, um, w which is great. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a really good year content wise. Nice. Yeah. There were, there were a few that we, uh, we flagged as well. I think with the extent, I don't know, I miss dragon tails, which why even, even more excited me when I, when you mentioned it, um, I have to figure out how to get that. But so uh, we, we had a few more on around, uh, I'm always looking at things operationally. So when there's one around, uh, shared narrative of cyber incidents, which I think is going to be cool. Uh, yeah. threat hunting is always a, a topic. It's of interest I think I saw me. our own, our very own grifter on that one. Yes, exactly. Yes. That, that was a big draw for me to, to get to chat with Neil again. And um, yeah, what was the other one? Okay, there's the Web3. Uh, it's been a hot topic. So that one that one caught my attention as well. There's a few others we're going to hopefully uh, get to talk about as topics and and uh, get to see his uh, session. I'm actually looking looking forward for our friend uh, Adam Shostak. It catch my yeah. attention. Yeah. As a big Star Wars <laughs> fan, a fully trained Jedi, you're not. And That's so right. you know, I, I want to hear yeah. him do the whole presentation talking like Yoda. I, oh, that that would be good. Another, another good storyteller. <laughs> If you if you lead with a, a session title like that, you better deliver, right? So that's uh, <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly that, the whole that thing. one caught my eye as well. You definitely yeah, set yeah. the bar. Yep. So talk about um, where the bar is high. <laughs> trainings. <laughs> um, what can you tell us about some of the trainings going on, Steve? I, I thought you were talking about the actual bar at the at the convention well, center. I got I think, you know, <laughs> that bar. That's that's in the back of the car on the way out today. There you go. You just turn around and grab something. Yeah, so we're we're planning a a, a large training program, and I don't know if you remember back last year, all the trainings were run virtually. So we we didn't bring any of the virtual any of the trainings to to Las Vegas. This year we've you know we've changed the model, and this is a model that we're using now at all of our events around the world, which is that we're running both in person trainings and virtual trainings not as a simulcast, right? So that's, you know, you can do that. You can, you can offer training in a room and simulcast it out to an online audience. But our, our belief all along has been that you really can't be present in both locations at the same time as a trainer. And, uh, you know, given the nature of Black Hat's training, it's the most technical training in the world, right? So it's, um, we, we've always felt that it's important that our trainers are, you know, in the moment present with the people that are, that are uh, signed up to take their class. So the way we're viewing trainings is, is some of our courses are being offered in person. Some of them are being offered online. Uh, and, and what it's allowed us to do is actually expand our program. We don't have a, any physical limitation on number of rooms. You know, we're always sort of fighting with the, uh, the, the venue, the, the Mandalay Bay, on getting more space for trainings. That sort of resolves a lot of that for at least for a few years where we can um, we can grow our program virtually. And for a lot of people that, that suits them better. If they don't have to jump on a plane, um, they can, you know, take the class from their, from their uh, living room. And, uh, and they have been, and we've seen even through the pandemic, the demand for training has been so, so strong, even, you know, in a virtual platform, um, the attendees don't seem to mind. Um, so, but we, that said, we're still really glad that it's coming back in person uh, it'll be a big program this year, but also have a, a nice complement of virtual courses. Okay. Can I, I'm going to connect the two things, or maybe a few things together here, because you, you mentioned Grifter, and we know Grifter from the NOC, the SOC, right? Um, how when you when you, which is an experience to be, to see how they run that. I mean, it's it's really impressive, yeah. uh, that whole team. How does the trainings being in both physical and virtual and and digital and and obviously hybrid for the for this the conference overall how does the knock change and i mean i'm sure they had to adjust to to that as well right yeah we kind of split it out so grifters uh, Grit Barton Grifter, our, 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 our wonderful NOC team, uh, you know they they're focused primarily on the in the building trainings you know, when you're doing a virtual trainings, it's much more about your platform providers and, and making sure that they're ready for um, Black Hat, right? So we've done a lot of work with our, our platform providers, making sure that, that things are, 
are uh, where they need to be um, so that there's no disruptions to the classes that are happening. But that's all sort of separate from the in-person knock uh, that Bart right. and Griffith are managing. I love to know uh, the the expo, like the business whole, how it's coming back. I mean, everybody just, every time I talk to someone is like, oh, we're back to normal. It's the all good school events and everything. I mean, is there like a hybrid aspect of that as well? It's, uh, yeah. you know, are you expanding that as well, going back to what it used to be? What's up with that? Yeah, that so uh, you know we've got th over 350 sponsors, which is sort of a, it's a new high watermark for Black Hat. So it's impressive. It's, uh, the business hall is very strong, and yeah, we've we've sort of um, you know along the way we've adopted a model where um, that includes a virtual event, right? So we're you know, we've been all in on a, a platform called Swap Card Swap Card for the last few years, doing all of our events on that platform, um, and we've got it pretty well you know fine tuned at this point where not just the business hall, but it's all the sponsored content as well. The sponsors um, have a lot of, uh, of content that they produce that we uh, are able to you know, serve up in the building in, in physical rooms, but also getting simulcast broadcast out in real time to our swap card audience. So it's um, it's sort of, I think for a sponsor, it means they, they do kind of have to be present in two places at once because they, they have online uh, people that want to talk to them and attend their sessions and, you know, hear about their products. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a tax on the, on the sponsors and that they really have to make sure that they're keeping an eye on both customers. You know, I gotta say that uh, I'd be curious, I don't know if you can, but just an overview maybe on, on your opinion and, and what the sponsors felt like through these two years, right? I, I had many that are like, yeah, if I cannot be in person, I'd rather not go. And I'm talking about many other events around the world. But then I feel like despite that first reaction, which is totally justifiable, I think that they, like the event itself, have seen that there is a an opportunity, like from crisis, that could be an opportunity. So do you feel like they are experiencing the same thing that, that the event itself, so reaching more people by doing that one thing because you're streaming all over the world. Yeah. So absolutely right. I think sponsors are realizing, I, I will say in the early first year, sponsors were completely thrown off by a virtual yeah. event. Yeah. Nobody had any practice in, in doing them. They didn't know how to, how to virtual event. Everyone knows how to, how to booth, they how, how to event, but they don't know how to do it in a, in a virtual. So that was a real learning curve. I think for a lot of sponsors, and we heard that a lot, um, I think where we are now, you know, a couple of years into this, yeah, they have realized that there's actually a tremendous opportunity in having a digital expansion to their, their presence at the event. They can reach a lot, lot more people. They need to think differently about it, right? Because really in the online um, environment, it's much more about the content. Um, you know, people are less likely to walk up and talk to somebody in a, in a virtual environment. It just doesn't happen as much, but they're, you know, if they focus their engagement around the, the content, and a lot of sponsors put some fantastic content together with great speakers. And if they hit the nail on the head with that, they can get really in good, you know, really good engagement in the virtual platform as well. Talk about hitting the sponsors were incredibly patient over the last couple of years. <laughs> and, and as hey, we, we out, you know, it was, it was um, great. to we see. We all had to reinvent. Yeah, we did it. We all had to reinvent. And, and I mean, even even ourselves, we we're yeah. like, okay, wait, we're not we're not going. Then how we're gonna do the chats on the road? How we're of course we didn't we didn't record literally driving, which was a very fun thing to do for Sean and I, and we we're looking yeah. forward to do that again. But uh, but we we have experimented, and and I think we we kind of nailed down this multimedia you know, interviewing people on the floor, but also going live streaming from certain, you know, even a different part of the world while somebody is watching it maybe online and somebody is right there on the floor. So you, you kind of put everybody together. I, I like it, to be honest. I really, yeah. I really enjoy it. I think it's forever changed the, you know, the, the model for, for, the, for these large scale events like a Black Hat. I mean, it just... Uh, it uh, it absolutely makes sense that we're that we're expanding accessibility to you know a digital audience people that don't want to jump on a plane 
uh, can't afford to jump on a plane, right? That's another factor. It's more cost effective for them. So it's, I like that we're making the event and the content more accessible to more people. Yep. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that we're part of it and uh, can, can have these conversations uh, and many of them. I want to go to um, one of my favorite spots and you kind of got to, you have to set yourself up when you go into this space, the, the arsenal. <laughs> you want to be in a frame of mind to go in there. And uh, I mean, it's just a collection of some super smart people and, and groups of folks doing really wacky, cool things with tools and, and research and all kinds of stuff that, I mean, I, I, I can't even describe it properly, but you can, I'm sure, Steve. So maybe give some, some folks uh, some insight into what's going on in Arsenal this year. Yeah. So I'm happy to say Arsenal is back in full force, which is really great to see. Um, so a, a huge number of submissions for tools. And yeah, for those that aren't familiar with, with Arsenal, it's, it's uh, an open source tool area of the of the event where we we allow different open source owners to come in and, and talk through their tool you know and for the cyber professional um tools like you know open source tools are are they're they're in their, their toolkit for doing their jobs and it's really important for them to hear what the latest and greatest is and hear what you know novel um approach somebody's taken to solve problems so uh for arsenal this year i think we've got about 80 tools that we're going to be demonstrating so uh, again, for those that aren't familiar, it's it's a true demo and interaction, right? So it's the you've got the person that, that owns the project um, at the event uh, giving a live demo of the tool. They're you know very accessible. They're done in really small groups, so you can get some good one-on-one -on -one time with with the presenter and ask questions and uh, and all, all that's going to be broadcast out to our online uh, platform as well. So whether you're there or in person or or uh, virtually you've, you've got access to the full, you know, arsenal program. Yeah. And then, I mean, the, the list you said 80, I think is what I heard, Steve, the, the list is massive. And then this yeah. is actionable stuff. I mean, the, the, this, this isn't just some fluffy, uh, let me see if I can create some, some new thing to get some attention. These are tools that, that the community uses. Yeah. And, uh, well, one example of, of that, Sean, is Metasploit, right? Metasploit's a, yep. a, a huge tool that the community uses, and we've got the Metasploit guys going to be there to talk through some of the, you know, the latest improvements with with that tool set. Um, that that's the one that jumped off the page for me when I was reading through the descriptions. Yep. Exactly. So, what else is going on, Steve? Any any other special programs? I mean, I, there, there's this thing uh, zero day uh, or day zero. Sorry. Sure. What? Zero day is something else. <laughs> day zero, yeah. what's that about? Yeah, day zero is a, a program we we launched a few years ago, and we've kind of refined it each year. But it's basically your introduction to Black Hat, and I think especially applicable for newbies. Um, you know, there's we have to remember that we were talking about you know 25 years of of this event in our in our industry, but there's a lot of new people coming into the industry as well, right? I think uh, last stat I saw was something like 700 thousand new cybersecurity professionals in, in 2020 two or 2021, I guess it would be. Um, so we need to make sure that we're sort of welcoming, welcoming them uh, into the community. So day zero is Black Hat's way of doing that. We, we like to bring various folks from our review board uh, to and, and, and staff to do talks on how to best navigate Black Hat. And it could be everything from, um, you know, wearing the right kind of shoes to uh, here's, here's some of the hot topics that you know from the lens of the review board that sifted through all of the of the abstracts and did all the voting on those um, so that starts on the on the tuesday night before the event it's a great way to kind of you know uh, get onboarded into the event um and that's back in full swing again which we're we're really you know glad to see well i can certainly be a little overwhelming the first time that you go there i Absolutely. remember well and and plus the fact that as we were making jokes at the beginning it happened in a city that is full of things that happen and distraction and and stuff it's uh you know it makes it even more overwhelming but an incredible experience and uh, we we are so glad that this is uh, happening again in a semi uh, normal whatever that means uh way and uh that is the 25th anniversary as well so that's that's an, uh, again a big thing and, and sean we we have 
we have uh, big plans ourselves. So maybe we do. First stop is the store to get the silver <laughs> swag. Yep. I wasn't talking about uh, that. For those plan, looking, but... I have I have the hat. I'm sporting the hat. <laughs> I notice um, it. I notice it. Yes. Uh, yeah, I have plenty, plenty, not not enough, but plenty of uh, black hat gear uh, floating around. Even with the move, a lot of it made made the journey with me to, uh, east coast. But um, no, it's jokes aside. Uh, the, the, the store is there, but I think what I'll find in the store more than just merchandise is probably a lot of my friends. <laughs> and I, that's I think right. That's that's uh, that's a big part of this. And and I was going to say in the beginning, and I didn't get a chance to just the. I mean, every group has their own sense of bonding. Um, and I, and I can see that in, in different, different groups and different cons that I go to, but no, nothing stands out quite like the group, uh, community of black hat. I mean, it's just so strong, this, this group of folks and, and to your point, Steve, it continues to grow. And I, I think with the growth, it gets stronger as well. And, uh, so I'm excited to be part of that. And, and, fortunate that we have a chance, Marco and I, to um, have this conversation with you, Steve, who I consider a friend, and and uh, and Chris and Kim uh, to, to kind of help further kick this in into gear as part of our chats on the road, and then lots of conversations with our friends like Adam Showstack and, and yep. many others we're going to meet for the first time this year. And um, yeah, and then so much more from the floor when we, when, uh, when we're covering things live during the event. So um, there's a lot to talk about and uh, I'm, I'm grateful that we get a chance to talk about it. And I'm grateful to you, Steve, and, and the rest of the Black Hat team for uh, including us in the event and giving us space to, uh, to do that. Cause uh, Absolutely. It's, it's really important. It, it really is. It's a community in, in the true sense of the world of the word. And, and uh, you know, you feel that as soon as you get to Black Hat and DEF CON as well. I mean, it's just a, uh, this is uh this is you know people are meeting their friends this is not just yeah. these aren't just work colleagues these are these are friends these are the people they hang out with and can really you know connect with and identify with and it's also amazing how and thanks to the technology i mean this is a community that is used to technology so you know with the first little embarrassment maybe we'll figure it out to keep everybody united it, close to each other, a lot of Zoom, a <laughs> lot of conversation, uh, streaming. And, and this is exactly, by the way, what we're going to keep doing as well. At this point, we have approached things in a, in a multimedia kind of way. We stream on social media, the conversation, either with people on the floor, not on the floor. Then we turn it into a podcast. And we, we have a few things in our, in our pocket. But as Sean said, it's, uh, it's always a, the tradition to talk to you as the, the the first conversation that that we that we do every year so and we we are honored that you always answer and uh, you show up so thank you right. thank you very much well i, I like it because i kind of feel like i can set the bar real low and then everyone that comes after me is I, I, i'm sure you know doing a fantastic job <laughs> and, and so sorry, he's talking about part. not that bar he's not talking not about that, that bar. Yeah. well if it's low you can reach it it's just that, that <laughs> far you want low i think Low no, anyway. you certainly yeah. you certainly do not set it low. So uh, we <laughs> we, we appreciate everything you've been doing for for the event and for the community um, very very much. Yeah, and, and the ability to recap in uh, in a short thirty minutes everything that you've been working on for so long through throughout the year uh, to bring this together uh, is really good. So, and a uh, quick shout out to Jenna Green who helps uh, pull all this together. I know she, she does a lot in the back background to, uh, to make it all happen for the press and, and media as well. So with that, um, everybody listening, hopefully uh, you have a good picture of what the 25th anniversary Black Hat Con will be all about. Uh, some of the folks you get to hear from, some of the conversations you can be part of, the the uh, topics you can learn about and uh, hopefully you'll follow Marco and I on our journey uh, to Las Vegas and uh, hopefully back from Vegas as well our chats on the road and uh, while we're there uh, real time we're streaming live so thanks everybody stay tuned to BHDC22 on ITSB magazine that's forward slash BHDC22 catch you on the next one thanks Steve thank you 
We hope you enjoyed this episode of our On Location Conversation. If you learned something new and this podcast made you think, then share ITSBMagazine.com with your friends, family, and colleagues. If you represent a company and wish to associate your brand with our conversations, sponsor one or more of our podcast channels. We hope you will come back for more stories and follow us on our journey. You can always find us at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society.